Okay, we're now at part five of this week's new comics, bitches. So um, I'm not going to waste any time because I'm kind of kind of blow through these uh, these books pretty quickly because these are the books of the week again. It's a close week, but one still stood out above the rest. You know what? Fuck it. I'm probably going to end up just doing this in two separate segments. Uh, because these four books, they're just too good for me to, to waste just 15 minutes. And if I could get that fucking you know, restriction off of my account that would allow me to extend beyond 15 minutes, uh, then I would gladly do that. So, Amazing Spider-Man 673. Uh, la you know, last week, uh, Amazing Spider-Man 672 was my book of the week. Um, and last week was a good week, too. But this is better. Uh, well, I shouldn't say, I mean, it's not, I shouldn't say better. But this, you know, this week is a little bit different. Um, this is the epilogue to Spider Island. Spider Island, the best I'm saying it right now, the best event comic that Marvel has done in quite a few years. Um, even better, I think, than Civil War. Uh, so, anyway. So, <laughs> as I wrote down here, just the notes that I took, uh, nudity, backup plans, spells wearing off, uh, hints of the future, and a sad breakup. Make up a brilliant epilogue to Spider Island. Um, one thing I do want to start off right now by saying is Stefano Caselli's uh, art, I actually like it better than Humberto Ramos's. Um, it just fits slots, it just fits slots work a little bit better. I mean, which is not to say that I don't really, really enjoy Humberto Ramos's art. It's just that I like Stefano Caselli's art better. Um, Okay, so what we've got here is everybody who has obviously just been a, uh, a human, a big hairy spider, um, wakes up to find themselves obviously not spidered, but also not clothed. <laughs> um, so, I mean, obviously it begins on a, you know, kind of a traditionally funny note for, uh, for Slot's runs. One of the things that helps to kind of separate him from some of the other hacks that have done Spider-Man over the years. Um, so it begins outright with hilarity. And also just kind of pointing out, you know, because, like, it's interesting that, you know, uh, when, you know, Misty Knight reawakens, she actually, you know, she has, of course, her bionic arm, but she also still has her headband on. And kind of all of the characters, and this may be a commentary on, you know, how tight the tights can be, you know, the costumes. Um, but Hawkeye says, you know, I don't think we're quite as weirded out about standing around here naked because, you know, we've been running around in tights for all of these years. And, we, you know, it's kind of like we practically already are naked. Um, obviously, that goes a lot more strictly for the women. Uh, but anyway, um but again, we, you know, as, you know, so it's kind of, you know, everybody's regrouping. Eddie Brock is being kind of hailed as the hero of Spider Island. Uh, Kane and Madam Webb uh, have some talking to do about Kane's future. Um, uh, we have the backup plan being that maybe what the Jackal had intended all along was for the uh, for the queen to turn into the giant spider that she did and then be killed so that he could extract uh, bone marrow from her. You know, so that this is still somehow figuring into his plans, his grand master plan. So obviously a little bit of deets there for the future. Um, you know, a little bit of, hmm, what's going to happen next with the Jackal? What is this asshole going to do now? Um, but, uh, you know, this might lead into, you know, the upcoming Scarlet Spider uh, series that I uh, Chris Yost is doing, I believe. Um, but anyway, uh, so what we've got here um, is, uh, you know, 
MJ is the only person other than Spider-Man still running around, uh, you know, Manhattan with spider powers. Well, and Kane, I should say. Um, so, we had that beautiful moment in the finale. Um, and maybe that has more meaning here because ultimately when... Uh, Peter gets home uh, to Carly. Um, she is packed up and is leaving. She's leaving him because he can't. She can't stand the lies anymore because she knows that he's Spider-Man. And and that's it's sad. It really it really was sad because I'm like I don't want these guys to split up. I kind of like these guys together. But at the same time, you know, anyway, we're going to uh, go forward and then we'll come back to that. Um, and then Peter goes, runs to Doctor Strange's, you know, kind of hidden sanctum sanctorum and basically says, you know, look, you did this spell, right? It was supposed to shield my secret identity from anybody who might learn it. But when he revealed himself, uh, when he did that, uh, when he did that uh, internet video, saying that, you know, he, you know, not saying directly, it was, it was supposed to imply that he, you know, was kind of in charge of things, and he was kind of, you know, he was kind of letting everybody know that, you know, I am a Spider-Man, but I'm not the Spider-Man, but that ultimately that removed this identity-protecting curse, which is how Carly was able to, you know, ultimately put two and two together, or at least finally put two and two together, and determined that he was Spider-Man. So now that curse, or now that uh, spell uh, is undone, uh, Spidey is definitely still in danger of uh, having his identity revealed. But, um, and so he gets this, the, the final vial of this, you know, the anti-venom venom, and it's enough to take away his own powers. And that led me to kind of a scary thought. It's like, okay, now is Kane, is this going to be another clone thing? Is Kane going to take over as Spider-Man? Uh, what's going to happen here? But ultimately, no. Um, he brings the syringe back to, uh, uh, to MJ to depower her. Um, she enjoyed doing that, but it had to come to an end because if not, she was going to turn into a big spider. Um, and of course, you know, still, you know, Spidey's feeling a bit unappreciated, even though he did save all of Manhattan, uh, you know, or at least, you know, yeah, not really a big part of it, uh, you know, by distributing those little spider slayers to inject everybody with the anti venom, uh, and him feeling, you know, just kind of un, you know, everybody seems a little bit ungrateful that he did this, um. Now, what's interesting about the breakup, and that leads to a, a great final page, uh, where it's you know basically New York's you know as MJ calls it you know it's New York's way of saying thanks. Um, basically, what this does, you know, as far as the breakup is concerned, is this does open up other possibilities, of, and, op and ultimately the possibility that opens up is, you know, maybe is it time now for Peter and MJ to give it another go. Because, you know, they've been unmarried for a couple of years now, uh, after people kept crowing for them to be apart, uh, so that Peter could explore new relationships, I'm assuming. Um, but, anyway. So, just, ultimately, what it is, is a great finale to a great event comic. One that was, uh, not certainly not overlooked, but, you know, just didn't get the same amount of hype as Fear Itself which was, I think, a failure as an event comic. Um, okay, so moving along. Animal Man number three. This is one of my favorite weeks. This is one of my favorite weeks of the, uh, of the, the New 52 because I get, I'm, I'm guaranteed pretty much to get two great comics in one week. This is one of them. Um, but what we get is, uh, you know, Buddy and Maxine, you know, his little daughter Maxine, uh, traveling into the, uh, the life web, 
And one of the things that I love so much about this issue is how differently Maxine and Buddy see the life web, see what's going on inside of it. I mean, it's, it's very creepy and scary and hallucinatory for Buddy, but for Maxine, it's very innocent and kind of maybe fun, and none of it is at all scary to her. And that's such a beautiful thing. Uh, to her and you know we have these uh, you know these enemies these hunters um, that are I mean because this this book has veered off you know very much from just superheroing to uh, to straight up horror and I think part of that is because of its tie to the red. Um, you know, which is another force on Earth, and we have these, you know, really frightening creatures. Uh, you know, not only after the, uh, you know, not only after Maxine and Buddy, but also after, uh, you know, his wife and his son were still back at home. And you know. But, you know, he's starting to feel how pure his power is here in the life web, at least Buddy is. Um, and, but, you know, Ellen and, uh, you know, someone I can never remember his damn name, uh, you know, are still, uh, they're, they're in trouble. And, you know, this, everything is just going to hell in a handbasket. And... Uh, Tra Travel Foreman's artist, his, his art in this book is just fucking creepier than hell, and and it's just and it's terrific, and I love that. I love how scary. I mean, like look at this, look at this cover for a second. I mean, this is not Animal Man Grant Morrison or Animal Man the you know part of the. Uh, you know, of Justice League Europe or anything like that. This is scary shit. You know, this is, it's meant to disturb, and disturb it does. I mean, this is, like I said, I mean, there there are, these are the creepiest, I mean, these are the creepiest villains in the New 52, just about. Um, they're, you know, they're, they're very much tied for the creepiest villains in the New 52. Um, you know, Jeff Lemire is just, he, he's doing such a, a fantastic job writing this comic and reintroducing this character into a world that you wouldn't have thought that he would really belong in, but he does. And I like how they kind of re, you know, they, they, they do some work that he didn't really get his powers from an alien, but, you know, the life web is where the previous animal men have come from, because there have been animal men before him, like another character that we're going to explore next. Um, but, uh, you know, that, you know, and again, the purity of his power is within this life web, but he's still not 100% powerful. And ultimately it's, you know, the, he's not even really being considered for the job here. It is Maxine that, the you know the life web that the beings of the life web are looking to for a, you know a new totem uh you know a new avatar if they if you will so again i mean incredibly thought provoking extremely well written great creepy art just a great comic man i i love animal man right now i love it uh Probably more, well, just a, or, or at least as much as I did when Grant Morrison was doing it. So, because that was some fascinating stuff that they were doing in that comic. So, anyway, uh, so we'll be back and we'll be talking about uh, the books of the week. So, stay tuned. One more round.